now move to part 8, numerical implementation of phone Mises plasticity with isotropic hardening. We will start with the step 1, which was the same for the case when we had no hardening. So we will have elastic predictor step where we are going to use a return mapping algorithm. I hope now you are familiar with that, what I mean by return mapping algorithm. We would first start by calculating the trial stress value based on the purely elastic behavior. This is also called elastic predictor step. We will also use this information to define the elasticity tensor, which describes the elastic stiffness matrix using Lamy's constants mu and lambda. So our stress increment relationship in terms of volumetric and shear part is given by this relationship here, depending on the Lamy's constants lambda and mu. And the elastic stiffness tensor, which is a fourth order tensor, is given by this in linear elasticity. So if you are still confused, then your stress tensor is generally written as the elasticity tensor with two dashes underneath and then epsilon. And that is basically your elasticity tensor. So generally this tensor has four indices because it's a fourth order tensor. These have two indices because these are second order tensors. So in Abacus, most of the time in matrix form, this fourth order tensor is stored as six by six matrix. And that is what I have written here because we will, in the, in the numerical implementation, we will be using it in this form. Now what we will do, we, we can determine the elastic trial stress using the relationship, which I again gave you before. So we will use the previous stress tensor value the elastic stiffness matrix, which is a fourth order tensor, or a six by six matrix, and multiply it with the strain increment, which is coming from the global solver for the current time increment. All the definitions are terms of Cauchy stress, and the superscript pre previous is basically from the previous time increment. Then we will determine the trial equivalent stress which is also the trial phone means the stress and that's given by this relationship and when you expand these with in terms of indices then you can write it down in in this form in terms of the individual components the flow stress is determined from hardening law in the previous case we are, our hardening law said that flow stress is only equal to this thing yield stress this means we had no hardening but now since we have a hardening, this means our stress strain curve would not look something like this, but rather we will have some sort of hardening, strain hardening. So this means it will still have some resistance from the material after the plastic deformation. Sigma Y initially yielding has been reached. So this will be depending on the accumulated plastic strain and that's why your flow stress is function of the initial yield strength. And also it depends on the plastic equivalent plastic strains at previous time t. E is the Young's modulus as before. This is the yield stress and N is the hardening exponent. Depending on the hardening, how, how, how stiff this curve is, you can, you can basically calibrate this parameter. Okay, so this is the only change from the phone Mises plasticity with no hardening that we only have this flow stress is basically a variable and it depends on the equivalent accumulated plastic strain in the material. Okay, now we will do the elastic predictor step and in this case we will compare the value of the trial phone Mises stress with the current yield stress value, flow stress value and that is given by sigma E trial minus sigma F. Remember in previous case it was sigma Y because that was constant but in this case sigma F will be changing depending on the accumulated plastic strain in the material. So that's why it's there. And if it is less than zero, this stress is below flow stress or the current yield stress of the material. And hence we are in the elastic zone. We will update the stresses, which will be equal to the trial stresses. And also we will update the stress tensor, which will be equal to the trial stress tensor. Else, if it is greater than zero, then we have to determine the flow direction and also calculate the effective plastic strain using Newton method, which we used in the previous case as well when there was no hardening. 
so the only thing now changed is the current tangent moduli as i showed you in the previous slide so elastic yielding point and then hardening so this hardening slope is changing throughout so we need to define the tangent modulus for that and that is et and that is given as young's modulus times a hardening exponent times one plus e which is again the young's modulus and then the accumulated equivalent plastic strain at time t over sigma y raised to power n minus one and so this is basically the relationship we are using and this is motivated from this equation here because your slope of this line will be depend will be basically given as so this slope et or tangent model will be given as the partial derivative of this sigma f with reference to equivalent plastic strain so if i take the derivative of this then you can easily see that this is n x raised to power n first so it will be sigma y times n and then the whole bracket 1 plus e epsilon p bar p bar t sorry i'm writing with a mouse and sigma y raised to power n minus 1 so it's typical derivative formula and then i take the derivative of the inside because we have to use a chain rule so times and this will become zero because there is no epsilon p here while this has epsilon p so this will be e over sigma e raised to power sigma y then the sigma y sigma y cancel out so we are having e times n times one plus this whole thing raised to power n minus one and that is what you see here as the tangent modulus in the plastic part of the curve so this is the derivative which i showed you just now okay and then we will use this incremental form to apply the plastic character step and as you remember this is again the same equivalent stress three times mu times the increment of equivalent plastic strain equals to the flow stress rather than the yield stress in the from the previous case and it's a function of the equivalent plastic strain as i showed you before so now we will compute in incremental equivalent plastic strain so again we will repeat the same newton method in this case for a, in order to find that this increment of equivalent plastic strain we need to iteratively solve this residual which I gave you in the previous slide and sigma f remember is a function of epsilon p as well so we need to be it needs to be changed as the equivalent plastic strain keeps on increasing due to the hardening again we're going to use the newton method so for the new value of epsilon p we will use the previous value plus the, the this whole residual over the derivative of this residual with respect to delta epsilon p so that is what is being done here and I think I already explained to you before so I'm just gonna that the new value of delta epsilon p would be the previous value plus the function value which is this residual over the derivative of this thing which will be 3 mu plus et which is coming from the formula of this thing and sigma f which is i already explained to you we have used this kind of assumption that hardening is can be given by this again if you look at johnson and cook model or some other power law hardening then they have used a different relationship so you can implement those easily as well but just need to take the derivative as i showed you for the case of et in the previous slide and et is given by this as i showed you after the derivative of this sigma f with reference to with respect to delta epsilon so everything should be updated so we need to add everything with this and then flow stress needs to be updated and then tangent model i will also be updated based on the new value of delta epsilon p and this cycle will keep on going until you find the residual to be approximately zero okay so up, once we have done that we will obviously obtain we'll get the value of delta p by the, doing this by minimizing this to zero approximately zero then we will update the stresses elastic strain and plastic strain tensors as we did before using the same formulas which i gave you before because there is nothing changing in this relationship here only thing which is changing is the sigma f which is a function of accumulated plastic strains or jacobian again we it's a partial derivative of stress increment tensor over the with respect to the strain increment tensor so we i'm going to use the same relationship which i gave you before 
and that's why I cleverly use ET at that time, which was zero in the previous case when there was no hardening, but now you can use the actual values of ET coming from this calculation in the previous slide. So once we have done that, we will know Jacobian as well. And also if you are working with the strains and stresses and Cauchy stresses and strains, then in that in the case of for the case of finite deformation, we can use rod six subroutine as we did it before to move or rotate all the stress and strain definitions forward in the context of large deformation. So again, we're going to do the same for this case as well.